Hello and welcome to my channel, Mad Knitwear. My name is Umbreel and I am a knitter from the Netherlands. Thank you so much for tuning in and celebrating this special episode with me. It is also a beautiful number, uh, episode number 20 of my knitting podcast. And today we're celebrating a thousand subscribers. Yeah, that's so cool. I have a little giveaway to, for yeah, the fact that I've reached this goal and I'm super happy to share that with you. Yeah, an amazing yarn dyer has been so generous to share a little giveaway with us, but that will be in the acquisitions section. So for now, I'm just going to do a regular podcast. I'm going to start with what I'm wearing. I'm going to talk about my finished objects. Then I'm going to talk about my works in progress and finally some future plans and a little bit of acquisitions. So yeah, it's been a few weeks that I filmed. It is a really, really gloomy uh, Sunday right now. It is the, what is it? The 18th of February. And uh, yeah, today I had some quality time with some of my family. So that was great. And right now uh, my boyfriend is out to do an ice hockey game. He plays ice hockey, has always played it since, ever since he was little. So now I'm all by myself and I can talk about all things knitting. So let's go. <laughs> First off, what I'm wearing, I am wearing my Eva cardigan. Um, I'll get up so you can see. It is this beautiful uh, cardigan. Uh, it's a pattern by Petite Knits and I have knitted it in Noro Silk Garden and Sock Solo in the color T81 and held it together with a drops kit silk. It's very hot because of the mohair <laughs> and I'm definitely knitting with mohair a lot less ever since I have made this one uh, just because I wanted a cardigan I could wear to work and everything and then I wore it to work one time and I was very hot. Um, but I've talked about that before. If you're interested in knowing about uh, more about this cardigan then I would recommend you to watch this video. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's what I'm wearing. I also, by the way, have all my information always in my Ravelry. I put down a lot of information there. So you can find out in my description box and also, yeah, you can look for me on Ravelry. <laughs> and if you have any other questions, you can always ask me down below or on my Instagram, which is my knitwear. Okay, let's just get started. I want to start with the birthday gift for my boyfriend. So I knitted a men's sweater, which is actually a female, uh, pattern but that doesn't matter um, and this is the Guernsey Genser um, which is a pattern by Sunday's Garn and it's in the very popular version of their magazine uh, the 2202 the February one from uh, 2022 and it's called Meek Til Dame it's with the green sweater on the front, the Frankie sweater. But this sweater is also in there. This is the Guernsey Genser. And my boyfriend really wanted one of those cable sweaters ever since I started knitting. And at the start, I was like, I can't do cables. But uh, yeah, then I did. <laughs> and I have knitted this in Drops Nepal in the colorway Deep ocean i think um and i had gotten 19 balls and i was scared of that i was going to run out of yarn um but i didn't i ended up having 70 grams left so a full ball plus 20 more grams from the like 18th ball um and i think the reason for that is that i needed the sleeves shorter uh, just like everybody does, because these sleeves are giant, like they're huge. So I knitted the size large, 
for my boyfriend and my boyfriend is really big so i would say like in normal uh ready to wear sizes or whatever this would be like a men's double xl triple xl maybe but double xl i would say it's roomy on him he is very tall and big i'm always surprised by the size that he needs from like stores um yeah <laughs> so just so you know if you're planning on knitting this for your significant other or for a man whatever to really think about what kind of size you want so i would recommend measuring at the chest a sweater that that person wears a lot and then just comparing that to the pattern and that made me uh go for the large which is very roomy it's also roomy on me it's really nice to wear i have been wearing it a lot um yeah i'll continue about the size and i'll get to yarn after this uh when i get a little more structured here um yeah so the size uh i have made the body a little longer so what i did is i have um made this section a little longer with these like garter ridges here and these and what I did, instead of having five garter ridges, I did seven. And it also made the cable more uh, symmetric. Because in the original pattern, you have like a little more cables leaning left or right than the other side. So now I have an equal amount of uh, cables going both ways. And that created a little more length in the body. And then I did the same thing for the sleeves and I omitted the last uh, part of the sleeve because actually you have one section here with the cross ones, the lattice section. Then you have this checkered section and then you have this with the cable with the garter stitches, garter ridges, sorry. And then you have after that you have another section and then another <laughs> three of these. So that's insane <laughs> because these sleeves for me, they go like here. Like when I'm wearing it, they go like past my fingertips. And this is a woman's pattern. And for my boyfriend, these are perfect. So these reach to like right around here. I blocked it mid project to see how much the sweater would grow and how much farther I needed to knit the body and the sleeves just to see, yeah, how much it would grow. And then the first time I blocked it, I actually stretched out the sleeves a lot. And then my boyfriend thought that they were a little too long. So then when I blocked it at the end, when I finished everything, then I just stretched it like widthwise and not lengthwise. Uh, and I don't pin my, when I block, by the way, I just, throw it on a towel i soak it wet block it in the bathtub put it in the washing machine a front load washing machine put it on the spin cycle and then i just put it on a towel that's all i do no pinning <laughs> it's very easy that way <laughs> um yeah and i just stretched it out like widthwise so it would shrink a little bit lengthwise i thought and it worked out beautifully so yeah, I omitted the whole last section and I saw on Ravelry that everybody does that, but this would be too long for me. So I wouldn't even know. I think I would have to do like less of this or something. I don't even know what I would do. Um, maybe leave out this whole section or something. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, they're so long. Um, yeah, and then for the body, I just did the ribbing. Uh, I would say it's like a little short on my boyfriend, but he didn't want me to make another section at the bottom. So I didn't do that. I just did ribbing, but I did do the little bit extra on the, the thing that I just told you about. Uh, yeah, and the nice modification that I made, and I talked about that in my previous podcast too, is I made these pearl bump lines on the shoulder because that's the only thing that I didn't really like about the pattern is that in the normal pattern you have, so there's moss stitch here everywhere. 
and then I'll see if I can find a picture of what it looks like. But because you do short rows for the front, it looks a little bit messy on that side on the pickup line. So you start knitting the back first, then you pick up stitches for the front and then you start working short rows. So instead of just starting to short, work the short rows in ma stitch, I did, uh, I made sure I had two pearl lines, like pearl rows. And then I started doing the ma stitch and the short rows. So yeah, if you, I have it explained in my Ravelry project page. I don't know if I'm the clearest there, but if you have any other questions about that, just feel free to ask. Yeah, and I really like the way that that looks. Uh, I like it a lot more, uh, and I think it looks a little more finished than the weird little open areas that the other um, versions have. I just prefer this. <laughs> so I'm happy that that worked out. And then to finish it off, I have made this cute little heart on the inside. And here you can kind of see what the color is like. It really is hard to uh, photograph, um, but it's this beautiful green, blue um, mix color from Drops Nepal. So Drops always has uni and then they have mix colors, like in most of their yarns. And I really like the mixed ones because they usually have like two colors that are kind of playing together. Uh, I'll put in a picture if I haven't done that already. Um, and that creates this beautiful, beautiful, yeah, color for this sweater. Sorry, I have hiccups. So yeah, I feel like that's everything about the sweater. I noticed that when I want to share everything about a project, I always, my brain is just so scattered. <laughs> I'm just talking a little bit about the fit, a little bit about the yarn, a little bit about the everything, a little bit about something more <laughs> so it's just kind of all over the place um so i hope i said everything um yeah it was a gift for his birthday his birthday is the day after valentine's and i started it like a month before i'm gonna look it up on my project page but i started it on january 10th and I finished it on February 10th. So I finished it in one month, which I think is a huge accomplishment. Um, yeah, I have, I am becoming more of a monogamous knitter, uh, but still, this is a beast of a sweater. <laughs> uh, knit in four and a half millimeter needles, by the way. See, there's always more things I haven't shared. Oh yeah, and the yarn is 65% wool and 35% alpaca, which makes it really heavy. The only thing is, I think my boyfriend has the same thing with alpaca that I used to have. And that is that alpaca just feels really itchy. And it's not really, like not really itchy itchy, not like you're wearing something really scratchy, but more like this, almost like a slight allergic reaction kind of thing and I think I got rid of it so I don't feel that anymore and my boyfriend has asked me because <laughs> I don't know if that's the case but when I wear something for a longer time I feel like it gets less itchy so I just said I'll wear it for a little bit and then he can start wearing it later so I wore it the like five days between I finished it and that he that his birthday, I finished I like wore it nonstop, and then I blocked it again so it would be ready for his birthday, uh, and now he wears it and he doesn't really find it that itchy anymore. So I don't know if it helped, but I was glad to help because it's so comfy. The only thing is that the sleeves were so long, so I just rolled them up. Yeah. <laughs> So that's the Guernsey Cancer. I'm really happy with it. And I think that I've said enough about it now. <laughs> then another finished object uh, you might have seen back here, but this is my pattern. These are the Blossoming Heart Socks. Yeah, they're available to download now. So they're available on Ravelry. I have a little 
discount code for my YouTube watchers. If you're interested in these, I have a 25% uh, discount code and I'll put in the discount code here. I think I said it was podcast lover. So if you are interested in downloading this uh, cute little pair, um, then I would love to refer you to my Ravelry uh, where you can download them. And otherwise you can just have a little look at them. <laughs> um, yeah, I just finished like weaving in all the ends. So if you wanna see the inside, that's kind of what it looks like. I have catch, like caught my floats um, and you can kind of see it through the white yarn, but really not on camera at all. Just from up close you can. Um, and yeah, it's little cute little hearts coming out of pots. <laughs> um, yeah, I love them. And they have my favorite heel flap, which is, uh, Honeycomb, heel flap, uh, yeah, it's really nice and sturdy and I think it looks really pretty. I have knitted these, that's good to tell you about. So I knitted the white is Lang Yarns, the um, red is Regia Schaffemeyer 4 ply. And then the green is another Lang yarns in sage green. And then the variegated yarn for the pots. And the top is Stranded Dye Works in the colorway Transcendence. And what I did for the Lang yarns, so the Lang yarns come with a little, like, it looks like a little bobbin that you use for sewing. Uh, they come with that in this reinforcement thread. And the idea is that you hold that with uh, the yarn for the toes and the heels. And I did, you can't, yeah, you can kind of see that it's a little darker here uh, or like a little more thick. So I did that for the toes and the heels. And then when I finished my first sock, because I just had 50 grams of the like bright white color, and I saw I used more than half for my first sock of the white yarn. And then what I did for my second pair, and honestly, I, I think it was this one. This was my second pair because I used two of the strands of the reinforcement thread held together <laughs> for this cuff, uh, just so I could save yarn for the rest of the sock. Um, so I did a little bit of yarn management in that way. And then I ended up having leftover of the yarn. So I don't know what happened there. But anyway, I finished them and I was a little scared that I would have to have a like little bit of the foot <laughs> in like a beige yarn or something. And that would have not been cute to have as my sample socks. So yeah, I would say main color a little over 50 grams. Um, and then you really don't need any of the um, contrast colors. So Put it in my pattern, it's like less than five grams for these two, and then less than 10 grams for the for those. I think maybe even less, but that's just to make sure. I don't know. Uh, you really don't need a lot at all. And I think they're so cute. So those are the Blossoming Heart Socks. A pattern by me. Yeah, oh yeah. And then the third finished object are another pair of socks that I'm wearing right now. So look at my my bright green pants. This is like my favorite outfit, by the way. I'm wearing these like bright green pants with a flare with this and then the white and then my necklace and my socks. Um, I have been wearing them <laughs> a bunch, so that's why they look worn, but that's what they're for. Um, these are the Petal Drop Socks by Handmade by Florence. I use my leftovers from my Artemis Yarns Advent Calendar from last uh, December that I used for my Stripe Hype sweater. Um, I used the leftovers for this and I have casted them on two at a time uh, from a cake of yarn and then I knit 
one of the socks from the inside and one of the socks from the outside of the cake. And then I got here and I ran out of yarn. <laughs> so I had like 35 grams and I thought, oh, if I do a short leg, I might be able to like make it, uh, but I couldn't make it. And then I was debating what I should do for the like last bit of the uh, leg and the toe. And then I just decided to go for the other, uh, like another color from that same advent calendar, which is this ye yellow pink one. And I have the colors, I looked them up. I always just say, yeah, this is from my uh, advent cal calendar, but they have names. These colorways have names. I think one of them was called Sunkissed and yeah, so it's Sweetheart, which I think was this one, and then Sunkissed. So uh, yeah, they're really, really pretty. And I kind of thought they look like a dip dye, like a dip dye candle. But the reason I think that I think they look like a dip dye candle is that when I was a kid, I had like a birthday that we went to do, make our own candles, twist them, and then we dyed them. I think I did a dip dye candle in these colors. And I know I've never used those candles, but I also don't know where they are. Also, I was like eight. So <laughs> a long time ago. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the socks. <laughs> little ooh, out of the, uh, let's keep talking about the knitting, not about candles. Um, so this is a lace pattern uh, and they really beautifully like opened up with wear and also I blocked them. Yeah, it's a really beginner friendly lace pattern. Um, originally the leg is a lot longer, but I have learned from making my Una socks. I have a little project vlog right here that you can watch. <laughs> um, learn from the Una socks that I don't really like a long leg on lace socks because I think with the holes and the long socks, it's like kind of cold and warm at the same time. I would rather have like a short sock because it's like summery socks, I guess. Um, yeah, and it's really, really pretty. I really like them and I've been wearing them a lot. I wore them like the day after I finished them um, and I have worn them around and now there's a bunch of wear on the heel I swapped in my honeycomb heel, by the way, that I also use for my socks. So this is not in the pattern. The pattern just has a regular slip stitch heel, but it has, it has felt it a lot that day that I was wearing them around town. I was just walking around uh, the city that we live in and um, I could definitely feel them too. Like my feet hurt. I don't know if you have that too, but if I just knitted socks and I wear them around, they hurt my feet. And then it's like the inside, like all the pearl bumps on the inside need to soften up first, like with wearing them a bunch before you can actually like wear them a whole day. But these are really comfy. I really like, they're not hot. I like it that they have the holes in them because usually I find my hand knit socks a little on the warm side. And I think I run hot or something because I can't really wear wool socks just outside like in my shoes because I always feel like my feet are super hot. Um, so these are really comfy. I might just make more lace socks. So they have more room to breathe, I guess. Yeah. All right, it's time to talk about my whips and my works in progress. I have, well, four things I wanna talk about, but one of the sections in here has like three projects. So I'll get into that later. But the first thing I wanna talk about is something that I blocked yesterday. And if you follow me on Instagram, you could have voted with everybody <laughs> for which color I was gonna use for this edge. So this is, I just blocked it yesterday, so it's a little damp still. This is my uh, 
cardi robe um this is just a pattern that i have calculated myself so it, yeah i just calculated it um it's knitted on eight millimeter needles and it is super long my goal was to have a warm cardigan that would go over my butt <laughs> so i could work from home and i would not have this part of my uh like my hip my side like where your hip meets your butt <laughs> always gets cold um, and I wanted something to reach over that and I had a bunch of drops melody and it's definitely a little wet still so I'm gonna put it to the side um, I had a bunch of drops melody left and based on how many balls I had of everything I decided on uh, all the stripes so I wanted to have thick stripes and I okay, I'll show you one more time so starting with this stripe with the light light red and the dark red then the bright blue yellow then I have this black with sparkle in it I just added a strand of sparkle because I thought it was fun with the same dark red and then the last stripe is this same one again and then it repeats well it just repeats one time so yeah and then in between i always had a little more of this light uh blue and then i wanted to do this i-cord edge in the light blue as well but this is all i have left so that wouldn't have been enough so i was debating between the yellow and the bright blue and then i asked on my instagram because i really didn't know <laughs> what to do i was kind of leaning towards the yellow and then uh, people on instagram also said to go with the yellow so then i did and i finished it yesterday evening put it in the bathtub together with some swatches that i'm going to show you and that are here uh and put it in a washing machine to spin cycle and then i dried it on the floor and it was just drying on her bed um, for during the day but I want to add um, a strap so there's no buttonholes and that's on purpose. I did this I-cord edging all around and I think it looks so beautiful with, I'll show you on this side, and don't mind all the ends I still need to weave in. This is not a design feature, <laughs> this is ends. <laughs> um, I really like this edge. so. I made the I-cord go all the way around, around the bottom and around like the neck edge and down. So it's continuous and I really like this curve that it makes at the bottom here. So yeah. Um, how I want to close it is with like, it's like a Cardi robe. <laughs> so I want to close it like a robe. So with a tie around the waist and I want to make like loops on the side and then make a large eye um, to go around and i think i'll do that in the bright blue just because these are all the colors that i have left and they're all not really that much and i feel like i could make a tie with this amount and otherwise if it's not enough i'll just i don't know do two colors <laughs> or three or whatever. Um, yeah, I'm really running low on the yarn now. So eight millimeter needles and the yarn held double, except for the uh, I-cord. I-cord is a single strand. And uh, it's mostly just for comfiness. Uh, I'm happy with it. Uh, I... I'm not planning, I mean, I wrote everything down that I did and I calculated it so I could grade it and make it into a pattern, but right now I just, uh, yeah, I just wanted to get this yarn out of stash and do something with it that was useful. So this is going to be my ultimate work from home cardigan. Um, it's not for going outside, it's just to be warm and for not having to put the heater on too much. So that was my cardi rope. Next, 
whip is something that is currently hibernating but i am gonna work on again now that i have finished a bunch of stuff and that is the aurelia pullover so this is the aurelia pullover it's a pattern by sorry nortland and um, I have been heavily inspired to pick it back up by Neenits. I have been seeing Neenits, Amy from Neenits, work on this pattern again in a very similar color. Although mine has a lot of different colors in there, but hers is gray and a little pinkish. And basically so is mine. Um, and I saw it and I thought, that's my sweater. <laughs> I need to continue working on it. So actually I test knitted this pattern and Sari only wanted us to finish a yoke and one sleeve. And um, yeah, I asked her if it was okay if I didn't finish the ribbing because I wanted to make sure with the fit and everything, if the sleeves were at the right length for me. So, and she was okay with that. And then I knitted a little bit more on the body, just like this much on the body and a little bit on the other sleeve and then I put it down <laughs> and I never picked it back up. So I don't know if you remember, but last year my boyfriend and I were in South Africa. I also filmed over there and yeah, you might've seen some videos, but before then I left this one here. So ever since South Africa, I haven't been working on this and it's a really, it's a shame. I should really finish this. But the reason is, first of all, it's so intricate. There's like cables and different cables and little cables and moss stitch and that I did wrong, by the way, I just did regular moss stitch and it was supposed to be like double moss stitch or something. And then that wasn't clear in the pattern back then when we were testing, it just said, knit in moss stitch or something, or is it seed stitch? I don't know, it said one of the things and then I just did this and then it turned out it needed to be something else. And then later she added a little chart of how she wanted this to be. And then it turned out I did it wrong. And I gave her all this feedback of like, it doesn't make sense <laughs> because then like the purl and the knit stitches were the other way around. And then it turned out that we had to do a different one. So, but it doesn't matter for the overall look. I just have seed stitch or moss stitch here. Uh, so pro one, knit one, and then, then the other round, the other way, you know? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I finished, definitely finished the hardest part, which was the yoke. And um, a lot of work, so intricate, haven't worked on it anymore. But the main reason is that the yarn that I'm using is JC Rennie Super Soft, which is from a cone. And I have it here in a different color too. Um, but I bought it in this colorway, which is Uji Pearl, which is so pretty. It is, it looks gray, but really it's just all of these different colors. It's yellow, it's blue, it's pink, it's a little bit of red, it's everything. Uh, so pretty, but I bought these cones and they're called greasy cones. And I think I was inspired by knitting traditions by Inga. She bought some cones and she was knitting with them. And I was like, oh, I want them, those two, they were really cheap. And it said on the website, you need to wash the yarn before working with it. And I was like, ah, well, I'll be fine. But it's so stinky. <laughs> it's like so stinky. And I remember working on this and my hands were just so smelly. And when I took this out of the bag that I was storing it in, it also smelled so bad coming out. And I thought, oh, I really don't want to work on that because it's just so smelly to work on. And I remember like, I didn't really want to eat after I knitted. Like I really needed to wash my hands with um, like a cloth 
so it would really rub off because just soap wasn't enough so it's pretty intense and then i just i didn't want to pick it back up what i did do uh is i did wash all of this yarn uh i put it into hanks so i used my umbrella so yeah like a swift um, i use it to put it from the cone onto my umbrella and then after 100 grams or something i cut the yarn and then i put it together into so i could wash it and i washed it I dried it and then like twisted it so it's like a hank um but it's still pretty smelly uh and i'm pretty sure i washed this too uh, this is some of the wash yarn. It's still pretty smelly. It did bloom a lot more than it did before I washed it. But that's a little, mm, you know, uh, that's not really making it very exciting to work on. But what I'm thinking is I'm just going to finish the sleeves. And then because they're a little easier, there's a little less going on on the sleeves because it's on this side is the cable and then on the other side is the seat stitch. So I think I'm just going to finish the sleeves so it feels like I've accomplished something and then just work on the body after that, like not worry about it. Allow myself to put it away again if I want to or just steam on through. Uh, yeah, and the other thing is I don't like bobbles. So there's bobbles here and I've made them and I also don't really, I don't think I'm like the best bobbler. They've gotten like better the farther I went, I think. But I just don't like the way they look. And that is also holding me back because I'm in decision, in a indecision paralysis or a decision par paralysis on whether or not I should just stop doing the bobbles for the rest of the body. Um, do you think that would look weird to just stop doing the bobbles? Because I am really thinking of just keep on knitting them and then just not doing the bobbles. Or would it look really weird to just have bobbles on the top part and then just stop doing them? I don't know. I think I want to omit them. And then maybe I also want to get rid of them. On the other, unlike the other ones. But I'm not sure. That would be a lot of work. And maybe I'll just leave them on. But I don't know why, but I really don't like bobbles. Like, it's not like I don't like working on them, uh, but I don't like the way that they look. And that's okay. I mean, you know, you can <laughs> not like something. Yeah. So that's my Aurelia pullover. I am taking it out of hibernation. I've after this episode, I'm going to put it into my whips on my Ravelry out of hibernation, put this on the couch, put a needle in one of my sleeves and make myself work on it because this is a waste of a beautiful project. Uh, yeah, I think I was knitting the size four, by the way, which is kind of small, but it works really well. It fits really well. It's smaller than my recommended size would be but it's like you know cable sweaters can also be form fitting and it is a little form fitting on sari nordland too so yeah i should really work on that one a lot <laughs> yeah so that's uh an hibernating whip that's going to be a whip again and then i have a few fun hats to show you so first of all Oh my gosh, this is like neon, neon blue. It is crazy blue on camera. <laughs> it is, okay, it is like really bright, but it's not that bright. That's a little, whew, but it's really pretty nevertheless. I am knitting my fifth muscle borough hat. Um, and this one is going to be for my dad. So most of the muscle borrow hats that I made are, have been for my boyfriend. I've made three of them for my boyfriend. One of which was actually for me, but he's wearing that hat all the time and I don't mind. 
And then I knitted one pair for myself, or a pair, I mean a hat, one version for myself, uh, which I knitted in Malabrigo Arroyo in the colorway Anniversario, and I'll put in a picture of my finished hat. And that was the fourth one that I've made. I was at my dad's house. I've never knitted him anything. So I made, let's see, for my family members, I have knitted hats for my one brother. I have knitted things for my mom. I have knitted a bunch of things for my boyfriend, but I've never knitted anything for my oldest brother or my dad. Um, and then I was at his house and I was wearing my muscle bear hat and Nelson was as well. And then my dad said, oh, you know what I need? I need a hat that goes over my ears because he has a hat and he he goes on walks a lot, like in the rain, everything, cold weather, whatever. He will always go on his walks. And then he had a hat that came like to here. So his ears were not covered. And then I let him try on my hat, my muscle bower hat. And he really liked the way it fit. And he was like, yeah, yeah, I don't care about color, whatever you want. <laughs> my dad is does not really care about like looks or aesthetics or whatever, just functionality. Um, he would walk around in sweaters with holes in them and stuff. And you know, you just have to tell him like, you can't wear it anymore. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, and then I thought, oh, I should use the Malabrigo Arroyo again because I use it for my hat and there's no pilling. And I'm really surprised by that because it, the yarn really feels like it could pill. It's really soft and it's super wash. I don't know. I was expecting a lot more pilling, but there's no pilling whatsoever on my hat. So then I thought, I just need to get one ball of a Malabrigo Arroyo. That's all it takes for a really long hat that will have a little bit of like uh, a little bit of room here and that you can flip over so you can cover your ears. So there will be four layers on your ears. Perfect. So I bought and I put the label on my project pad. I brought Malabrigo Arroyo in the colorway Matisse Blue. 515 Matisse Blue. And uh, yeah, I bought it online. Super nice color. Uh, I let my dad pick from the colors that this website had available. And he picked this one. He said, that's my all time favorite color. So he is very stylish. My dad is so stylish because this is, this has got to be the most stylish color right now, the like electric blue. So I'm making my dad an electric blue muscle bar hat and it's been turning out really pretty. It's such a beautiful tonal. You can see like kind of like stripes and yeah. I am using three and a half millimeter needles and I'm doing the size. Yeah, it's so hard with the muscle blower hat because I don't want to give away too much of the pattern, but also you can just choose whichever size based on your uh, gauge. So it's hard to say the size because you don't know which gauge I have, but I'm doing the 104 stitches. That's what I'm doing. And then, yeah. Uh, 104 stitches on three and a half millimeter needles. And this is a sport to DK weight yarn. Um, I think I've knitted almost all of my muscle bar hats on three and a half millimeter needles. And then one pair on four. That's my muscle bar hat. I've been working on that a lot because, uh, well, last night. I was working on it last night. <laughs> a lot. Uh, yeah, so that's the muscle bar hat. Then I was working on uh, clearing out my yarn, uh, all my yarn. I was just like organizing it, looking through it, trying to find more inspiration for something new to cast on. Because I have been finishing a lot of things and I don't have that many whips anymore. This is literally all I have. And that Cardi robe is basically finished. Um, and then I found this muscle bar hat that I was working on, which is uh, actually, it has too large of a gauge to be a muscle bar hat. So the gauge is um, like, there's too few stitches per inch uh, for the pattern, but I just used the same logic to go down to 
a certain amount of stitches. I really don't remember how many I did. Um, and yeah, I'm just working the same instructions as uh, the muscle bar hat gives. And uh, yeah, I'm using up this old We Are Knitters yarn uh, held together with a drops kit silk um, that I used for my mom's cardigan that I made a long time ago, which is basically the same pattern as my cardi rope. So it all comes together here. These are eight millimeter needles, six. Six millimeter needles that I'm using. And uh, yeah, I just thought I would put it here so I have another hat to work on. Um, I don't know if I'll have enough yarn to do like the whole close it down and fold it into it itself, but I might just do, I'm doing a top down hat and I might just do like knit, knit, knit and then bind off at some point and then fold it into itself or something. And I kind of do a top down, uh, yeah, fold it full in the cuff kind of thing. I don't know. I'll see how far I get with this yarn. Um, and I think that would be a gift. I would give that one to my mom because it f goes with her cardigan and she really likes that color. And then another hat that I'm working on without a pattern is this hat, which is also super bright. Um, and this is a top-down version of the weekend hat. And I am strongly debating if I am making this big enough. Um, and I have not gotten to a part where I can try it on yet because there's not enough yarn, uh, fabric. <laughs> Um, and I'm also debating if I like it because it's very marled. Um, I'm using this sock yarn, which is so bright. And then this Lang Lusso with camel in it held together. And it's kind of marling, but I don't really like these two together to marl, if that makes sense. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. I'm just gonna keep it in this project bag and maybe just not touch it for a while and then think about it later. But it's a one by one rip, ripped hat. And my idea was to do kind of a weekend hat by Petite Knit style where I would fold it in three times. And then I did it top down because I don't think I'll have enough yarn of the Lusso, but then the last uh, section because you fold it twice so the last section will be hidden on the inside and I thought okay it doesn't matter if I ran out of yarn there because <laughs> you fold it in itself so you wouldn't really see it so those are all of my hat whips all of a sudden all of these hats that I'm working on which is kind of uh, interesting then there's one sock that I worked on and it's so funny because <laughs> We were gonna see Aquaman and I really liked Aquaman 1, so we started watching Aquaman 2. And um, I wanted to have a sock casted on for that. And my boyfriend was like, why can't you just go to the movies and just watch a movie? And then I said, well, I get, I'll get distracted, either get distracted or I'm just gonna eat all the popcorn like super fast and be really annoying. It's better for me to have something in my hands and have something to do, to have something to knit on. But for that, I want something stockinette and around, so I really don't have to think about it because it's really not fun to like have to look at your work in between. Like you really just want to do, do like this. Um, I thought this was silly too when I started knitting, um, but it's really nice to just have your hands busy and then it makes me concentrate on the movie more. Uh, yeah. I don't know. So I cast it on this sock, um, but it's so wonky. Um, I have to sneeze. So I cast it on the sock and I tried to do this uh, toe part super fast so I could get to the like plain stockinette and round magic loop uh, so I could do that at the theater. And I used 
this yarn that my boyfriend and I hand dyed at the Handwerk Burs, which is, they say, the biggest craft fair of Europe, which was in Zwolle in the Netherlands. And uh, he uh, hand dyed this. So I used that for the toe. And then I did the first few rounds of this. And then I started knitting at the theater. But it's just like so big because of the theater. When I knit, my tension is all over the place. And I knit so loose, like so loose. So yeah, I don't like the way that it looks. I also like almost miss, missed a stitch somewhere. So I just got one of the four plies instead of the whole strand somewhere. So I lettered that down, but then I thought, okay, this is just not, I don't want to have this for socks for my boyfriend. Uh, he chose the colors. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't want to have that because it's too big. And the second sock is not going to look like this because I'm not going to do it while watching a movie in the dark. And then I remembered that I had the same problem before. And I talked about it in my podcast. I was knitting on these toe up socks for myself in this yarn that I have left, had like, uh, what well, in this yarn and that I used it in the movie theater. I was knitting on it in the movie theater and then it got, uh, I came home and it was too big. So I thought, why did I do it again? I already went through this. I already thought, don't bring socks to the movie theaters, like bring a hat or something. I don't know why, but on the small needles, my gauge is all over the place when I'm in the theaters. So I ripped out the needles and I'm gonna like rip it all out until where I left it off and I guess the only thing that was done in that movie theater was just something to have my hands busy instead of eating all the popcorn. And I still ate all the popcorn. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah, it's funny. I have it in this cute project bag with bikes on it um, that my mother-in-law gifted me for Christmas. And he wanted this color with it too, for the heel maybe. Yeah. So I will put this away and work on it another time because I want to work on different socks first. And uh, yeah, I can knit him socks at a later time. So I'll do that. All right, then we're ready for the future plans and I already said that I have worked on some swatches. So here are the swatches that I worked on. I'll start with this one. I was thinking of making the other loops sweater, the twist loop sweater. Um, and I was thinking of using these two yarns. I am holding a hand dyed yarn from Hobby Lobby together with a strand of the uh, holst tights. I, I'll get it quick. So here's the holst tights and then here's the hand dyed yarn from Hobby Lobby. I have four of these. I love the holst tights. I think I haven't actually made a whole pattern out of it. I just have this yarn, but I can already tell this is my favorite yarn ever. <laughs> holst tights. Just so nice and squishy and you work it up and it's just beautiful. And I was using this for my traveler hoodie from Andrea Mari, held together with my advent calendar from Olivia and Oliver Fibers, but I ripped it all out. I thought it was a little too big and I wasn't sure if I wanted an oversized cropped sweater because I like my things not too oversized or oversized and long. So yeah, I ripped it out. Um, still really like that pattern though, but that would be for something else. And then I held it together with this to make this swatch, but I think it's a little too busy. Also, the I don't really want to make that pattern because it's so not size inclusive. It just goes up to a size extra 2XL, I think. 
And I just don't think you should do that anymore. <laughs> I think if you are a big designer, you should just make your pattern size inclusive. No shame, because I have had a response one time on one of my patterns that said, stop shaming designers. I'm not shaming them. I'm just saying you should. And I feel like I have an audience here and I should recommend patterns that are size inclusive and designers that take the time to make their patterns size inclusive. And I don't think it looks that pretty. Um, you can't, like, it's too busy for uh, this pattern anyway. So I was not excited about this. And this is the reason why it's good for swatching. It's not just to measure your gauge, but it's also to see if you like what you had in your mind that it was gonna look like. I thought it was gonna be a lot more muted and it's not. So now I know that this is not for this sweater. So that's great because then that's out of my brain because there's too many ideas for projects in my brain. And then I also made this swatch, which is for the Darkmoor sweater by Kadri. And I'm sorry for the noise that you hear, but there's little kids that live right above us and it's Sunday afternoon. So they're excited, I guess. Just think of happy jumping kids and then it's okay. That's what I do. <laughs> um, yeah, and this is uh, this cone that I showed you held triple and I am getting really excited to cast this sweater on. So I blocked it and it's just turning out beautiful. Also this yarn, so it's also from JC Rennie in the colorway Jade. This yarn is a lot less greasy and smelly than the other yarn, the Uji Pearl. So I think this will be a lot, like a lot better to work on. Um, yeah, and I'm holding it three strands together. I knitted it on the five and a half millimeter needles. And I think I do like the fabric, although I could go down to a five maybe. Um, and yeah, I think I could go, go down to a five because I have 14 and a half stitches uh, for 10 centimeters. And I just know that with the weight of the sweater, it will go a little, like it will stretch out a little more and with wearing because that always happens. A gauge swatch is not, is never really accurate to what it would actually be like. I always account for it being in reality, the uh, project will be have a little bigger gauge. So if I have 14 and a half and I need 15, I should go down a needle size. When wearing, it will never go to 15 from 14 and a half. It will more likely go to like 13 and a half stitches per 10, 10 centimeters for the finished pro product. So I think I'm gonna go down a needle size to the five. And also it's a little holy. So I think that would be good. See, you can see the wall and my finger through it. Um, yeah, and I blocked this and I washed it with like dish soap because it was like a little oily and I wanted the oil off. I don't know if that's a good practice, but I did it anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm really excited to cast it on and also a sweater on five millimeter needles, stockinette, what I really like about the Dartmoor sweater is the beautiful detail on the shoulder. I have learned from Knits by Mandy that because she made the Harlow sweater and it has the same technique that it's a eye cord edge. But I'm gonna find that out when I buy the pattern and make the Dartmoor sweater. I'm really excited. I never just make a basic sweater in one color. I always go crazy. So that would be a good one to do for me. So that's a plan and I have some plans for my acrylic yarn stash. I want to make the Lonely Leftovers Fest. So if you have followed my videos for my acrylic yarn stash or maybe you are here from watching those, then welcome. Um, and I'll link in the playlist up here. Um, 
but I made the Sophie shawl. That was my last video of my acrylic stash down videos. And the next one I want to do about the Lonely Leftovers Fest by Woman Beyond or the Kuno Cushions by Anne Fensel. I think that would make a huge, put a huge dent in my uh, acrylic yarn stash. So maybe those will be really good. I'm even thinking I should hold yarns together so then it will really go really fast. Huge stash buster. So yeah, I'm thinking of those uh, projects. And then another thing I want to make is another pair of socks. And I want to make another pair for the 52 weeks of socks project vlogs. Uh, hi also to people who are here from those videos because I have been making a lot of vlogs. And the last one I made were about the riverbed socks that are just hanging out on my couch or when I'm cold. Uh, and the next pair I want to make is a Lempy by, I'll put it down here. It's 52 weeks of socks book, uh, sock pattern. So those will be very exciting to work on. And now we can go to the final part. Da -da -da -da! So for the final part, uh, I have some acquisitions to show you. And this has to do with the giveaway because uh, Divergent Yarn, out of Portugal, Salome, has been so kind to sponsor this giveaway for my thousand subscribers on YouTube. And she also sent me a few uh, yarns to try out. And I really want to share them with you because they're right up my alley. And if you follow me here, you're also interested in colors, I assume, because I use a lot of colors. But look at these yarns. They're incredibly beautiful. Oh, okay, I'll show you, I'll show them to you one by one. So first off, this is definitely my favorite. Uh, I opened the box and I just went like, ah, and I was by myself. And then my boyfriend came home and said, ah, <laughs> come look. But they're just so beautiful and they're right, like this isn't me, you know? And it's called Quirky Character. So I guess I am a quirky character and I'm proud of that. Um, it's a 75% superwash merino wool and 25% nylon. And one uh, skein of 100 grams comes in for 25 um, meters. And I got these cute little stitch markers too. Um, yeah, and it has pink, blue, it's so beautiful. It's so neon, it's so me. I love it. Um, so that's the first 100 gram skein. The other 100 gram skein is neon neutral, which is a neon neutral because it has some neon yellow in it. And then other than that, it's uh, beige and some pink in it. And I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love the neon in there. And uh, yeah, Salome was so sweet. We were talking about uh, yarn and I said, oh, I love like pinks and I love neon like um, speckles in it and everything. And then what she sent me was just like perfect. But also if you look on her Instagram, so if you're interested in any of the yarns, I would refer you to her Instagram. Uh, all the colors are just, I love them. Like they're so up my color alley. Like it's exactly what I like. And then she gave me four minis, um, which are these. The first one is this super neon one and uh, it doesn't, doesn't have a name on it. So it's just the uh, bright neon yellow. Then there's this bright neon pink. So these are basically beautiful minis for this sock, I feel like. And then these two are minis uh, and they have a colorway name. So this one is called Dreamland. And then the other one is called No Regrets. Beautiful green. So they're so 
pretty, so, so pretty. And here is the giveaway because Salome has been so sweet, so Divergent Yarn, it's been so sweet to offer us a sock set to give away. And uh, I wanted to add in that to the sock set, my pattern, the Kirsten Bosch socks, because they go with two colors and that would be really cute. I think for a sock set, of course you don't have to knit that, but as a gift for me, I give my Kirsten Bosch socks and that together would be a beautiful price. And then as a second price, I wanted to give away my uh, Blossoming Heart socks pattern. Um, so those are the things that you can win on this giveaway. So a beautiful sock set, set with a sock pattern and uh, another sock pattern as the second price. And all you have to do for that is leave a comment uh, with uh, in there what kind of video you enjoy most on my channel. So it can be the acrylic yarn stash down stuff, 52 weeks of socks, something else, my pattern videos, my podcast, whatever you like. So uh, yeah, just leave a comment with that in it and then you participate in this giveaway. I will announce the winner in my next podcast. I will not contact you. So I will announce the winner in the next podcast and then ask you to email me and I will not ask you anything. So if you are, if someone is approaching you about this giveaway, then it's not me. Just so you know, I, I don't know if that's gonna happen, but just so you know. All right, so those are really those beautiful yarns. And that's another project plan that I have because I am planning on making a new pattern with these two together. And I have it all in my head and I have been trying to do math on it, like before going to bed, <laughs> couldn't sleep. I was like, but if I have a size up, I can't do it <laughs> because it has, it's going to have cables in it. So that's why there's a little bit of calculations. So it's marinating in my brain and it will come out at some point and it's so pretty. So Salome, thank you so much for sending this yarn and providing the sock set for this giveaway. Um, yeah, and making someone else super happy with a beautiful sock set. So that's super great. Then the final acquisition is I bought the Stitch Bible in Dutch. It's called the Nieuwe Brei Bible. So it's the new Stitch Bible. It uh, has all these different types of stitches in it and tells you like how to make them. And it's been very inspiring, uh, especially since I love making socks and I love making sock patterns. So this is a really good source for inspiration for me. Um, maybe to make a lace sock uh for like one of my future sock patterns so i wanted to share that with you so it might be some new sock patterns coming up later then finally i wanted to ask you guys for something because now that i have reached a thousand subscribers i can be monetized so i have like clicked on all the links to have ads on my videos and everything and i have two questions so one of them is feedback please on how many uh ads there are uh if it's too many or anything because i really haven't got it figured out yet uh how many youtube puts in but i know from other like videos that people like turn off some ads but i don't know tell me if it's bothering you then i'll like tune it down i'll figure out how to tune it down so please let me know. And then the other thing is for people who film as well, maybe have a knitting podcast or film in any other way. If you have any camera or microphone recommendations, I am definitely considering getting a microphone because I feel like the sound is the most important. Um, and then I'm also thinking about getting a good camera because up till now I have always filmed everything on my phone with a ring light and makes it so bright. <laughs> uh, so yeah, if you have any recommendations, then please let me know. Uh, they're greatly appreciated. 
So yeah, that was everything for this video. I feel like it is a very long one. I have been rambling on a lot. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing. Please like this video and leave a comment with what kind of video that you like the most for my channel in the comments to be able to get the socks set from Divergent Yarns. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next